So I haven't really talked about it much, but I did watch Star Trek uh, Picard Season 2, and it was not good. Now, my only real experience with Star Trek Picard was in watching Dave Colon slash Computing Forever's recaps on it. They were actually quality and quite possibly a more pleasurable experience than watching that season. Season 2 seems to pick up in a matter in which it doesn't matter if you saw Season 1 or not, because evidently character development happened between seasons. You have uh, this, this gal who my audience correct keeps wanting to refer to as raffle uh, she evidently has built this bond with this elf like romulan guy who uses a sword and they get separated and she loses it but what uh, it doesn't matter okay the real butt of the scorn in this video is not about star trek picard it's about akiva goldsmith and alex kurtzman the two guys who seem to be at the helm of star trek for the time being, steering it into a meteor. Now, I did speak of, and somewhat fondly, the premiere episode of Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Though there were some complaints, episode two is now showcasing to me a pattern that will be repeated in to the detriment of Star Trek. Okay, so it's like this. Techno babble is something brought up to make fun of geeks. Okay, oh you, yeah, they just try to explain it away with some technological non-speak. Oh yeah, it's not scientific. That, that's what the normies would say. But that science has a place in Star Trek. Now I I can kind of understand the point that that is creating a wall that is keeping more people from enjoying and getting into Star Trek. So maybe some reduction of techno babble is warranted. I get that. But the operation of a Starfleet ship was done in a very naval inspired formal fashion. Characters were referred to by their rank. They spoke proper English. There was decorum. In episode two of Star Trek Strange New Worlds, this is thrown out the window. Oh yeah, oh yeah, well we pissed them off, oh shit. Oh look, there's a comet coming to this uh, class M planet, but it's got pre-warp civilization. Uh, any suggestions? Oh yeah, we could hit it with some stuff, you know, knock out, okay, whatever, yeah, there we go. You know, they just established the prime directive with the previous episode. Because of some interference, by the end of the episode, they renamed General Order Number One to Prime Directive. Even joked, like, that's gonna stick. And immediately, no one seems to be aware of this. There is no concern. Now, maybe you could say, well, the Prime Directive allows them to interfere with a civilization so long as that civilization is unaware. That's great. But shouldn't someone have brought that up? Yeah, how come when they call everybody into the captain's quarters for a barbecue? Yeah, everybody's crazy and formal. More so than I ever saw a poker game go down on the Enterprise D. But the writers bring that same attitude to the freaking bridge. Now, I'm sure the Paramount Viacom of CBS is looking at this and saying, hey, you see this ragtag loose lip fashion in Star Wars? That's what makes that popular, right? Well, we've got a spacefaring property. How come we can't be that popular? Oh, it's because we're rigid. We have structure. We have science. Let's get rid of all of that shit. And I think that this call is being placed by Akiva Goldsmith and Alex Kurtman. Oh look, cancel culture is a stupid thing. It shouldn't exist. Oh, you tweeted something 10 years ago. Well, let's use that against you now. What I'm evoking here is not cancel culture. It is calling to be dismissed for cause, for failure to do your job. Transforming Star Trek to broaden the appeal does not honor the legacy of creator Gene Roddenberry. You know, I could probably suffer through your messages saying things like, oh, those January 6 rides, yeah, that's the downfall of society right there. Forget September 11, 2001. That was a little thing. This was a tiny little riot at the Capitol, but we're going to call it an insurrection, and that that's where democracy fell apart, even though it was squelched. I could probably suffer through this narrative and radical inclusion tactics if they were presented in a formal, sophisticated manner fitting the Star Trek legacy. Instead of coming across as a script solely consisting of material as if it were punched up by a recent college grad. Yeah, I look back at Star Trek and I probably thought maybe it wasn't as much fun as Star Wars, but we needed that. We needed the rigid structure, the organization of Starfleet to take these matters seriously. Now look, I know this is a tiny, oft-censored channel. I'm not going to gain any real traction here, but make your own video. Spread, sign a petition. Some, there has to be a petition online for this, right?
Hey, it's Vaughn's mom again, so I just wanted to remind you that instead of buying Vaughn's weird pictures online and various states of undress, you can just bookmark his Amazon affiliate link, and then when you shop, throw it on Amazon, he gets a few pennies here and there.